with the message of hope. Our next speaker is the principal at Clintondale High School near Detroit. Uh, his work has been profiled in Newsweek, the New York Times, PBS, among many, many other outlets. Please welcome Greg Green. You know, I really like college campuses. I mean, I think college campuses are terrific. I grew up in a college town. And, and one thing that it actually started my career as a college student right here at Michigan State, right at Holden Hall. And when, I, when I, I'm on campus last night, what I really felt was the optimism. You know, every college student goes into it, whether you be a doctor, teacher, or what have you, you progress along the four-year track to change the world. But the one thing that I really find in our schools today is a concern that we lack hope in our school-age children. You know, Gail Pohl did a survey of almost 500,000 students. And what they told us was that just one in two students were hopeful. Now, that's a statistic, but it jumped off the page. Because I have a 16-year-old. I have a 12-year-old at home. And many of you have children in the audience today. And so this just isn't a statistic. This is fact. This lives in your family room. This goes to bed at night. It's so alarming to think that our kids are not hopeful today. But I can understand why. Because look at the process that we go at school, when we have school, and we, we have kids come to school. What's our actual process? Kids listen to lectures, and then they go home. Where's the assistance at home? Students sitting at the kitchen table. Who's going to help them with advanced algebra? Who's going to help them with chemistry? Who's going to help them with physics? And that parent, they haven't been in the classroom in 30 years. Even if you're a physicist, do you understand the point that the teacher's trying to make? And how about a teacher when they send the work home with the students and they come back and 20% is done? How do they progress? And as an administrator, do you even have the money to add support staff for those persons? So you can understand why hope is dying in our schools. One of the things that you hear all the time in schools is, what do you want me to do? These are things that have been going on for 300 years. And in my school, our story, we've said the same things over and over and over. We experienced a lot of these problems. But the one thing that we heard that changed my life was a consultant. See, I was frustrated as a principal. I didn't know what to do. And when you're frustrated, you, you turn to other people. And I remember to this day, I had a meeting, and we had a bunch of consultants around the room. And that consultant said this. She turned and she said, there's no hope for your students all the kind of students that you have? That was it. I drew the line. I said, you know what? That's wrong. I'm not going to allow you to say that anymore. And so what I did is I made a decision. You know, I could fall back and complain like everybody else in the, in the state of Michigan, United States, saying, you know, it's money. It's, you know, our situation. But I didn't. I stepped forward. I said, you know what, if I, if there's no one going to do it, who else is going to do it? I'll do it. And so what I did is I started looking at people who had failed before and actually embraced failure. And actually what they did is they said, hey, learn from your mistakes. That's what they said. Take the lessons that failure teaches you, and that will help guide you in the process. So one day I had a terrible day. And so I went to a classroom that's empty in our school. And I started asking students along the way, you know, throughout the weeks as I was looking at, you know, how do we get better? How do we get better? And what I did is I simply just, the students kept telling me, you know, Mr. Green, when I sent home, when you sent homework home to our school, I don't have anybody to help me. I don't have technology. Sometimes I don't have food to eat. And also, I don't have a community that necessarily supports homework. 
and I don't have any experts around. My parents can't help me with that homework process. But then I also, in my response to failure, response, what, what resources do I have? I have experts in the classroom. I have social workers. I have assistant principals. I have all kinds of resources with technology and so forth. Then why do I keep sending the homework home to a place where those resources are absent? Why don't I just reverse the process? Why don't we just build it so that when kids learn, they actually have all the resources that our taxes supply? Huh. How did that resonate in my life? How do you come up with that? It came up from my best teacher. That was my mom. You know, my mom passed away two years ago, a day before my birthday two years ago. And it's not a day that I, that I don't miss her. But moms always teach the best lessons, right? And one of the things my mom did is she made a recipe with cinnamon and sweet rolls. You can just smell them as you come in the house. And everybody has those experiences as a family, right? And you, see, you, just, you can see the frosting melted, right? But the one thing that she taught me in that whole process, because everybody would come to the house and say, Aunt Rose, can you make these sweet rolls? And everybody would stand in the kitchen and can't wait for them to come out. One of the things that she did is she taught me that, listen, the sweet rolls have a certain process. Because when I was 10 years old, I was trying to make them. And, you know, obviously at 10 years old, I'd just throw it all together. And it'd come out to be this broken mess, right? But what she did is that you have to go, in, you might have all the ingredients, but you might have to go in a certain order. Ah, the aha moment for me. At 44 years old finally figuring it out. I realized that I had all the ingredients right in front of me. But what we had to pay attention to was the order in which we did things. You see, in order to get this delicious sweet roll recipe, you had to follow a certain order in order to get the, the desired outcome. And what we did is that in schools, when you look at it, we have experts, we have technology, we have great resources, we have all those things. But what do you know we do? We practice in an environment that's absent of those things. Does that make any sense? No. Just think if we reshuffled the deck to align our current resources. We have the ingredients right in front of us. All we have to do is place the lecture in some other place. Research tells us that. Research says that lecture is the most ineffective way. It doesn't mean that you need to avoid lectures, but what we need to do is put it in the home where they can take notes, where they can review materials. And when you come to class, you actively participate in the learning with an expert right there. And all your resources and tools right there. It's so simple. It's right in front of us. There's no reason that we can't do it. We can do this, people. It's right there. We can use the technology to help with the process. The technologies are getting simpler and simpler, and we're more connected than we ever were before. That's how you create hope in schools. That's how you create hope, because now, you have a reason to get together. You can experience success together. And you know what? All schools can do it. Each one of our ch children can work with the subject expert. It can pr be provided with technology. It can be as simple technology as we want to make it. It can be the device that weighs in our hands. But what we can do is we can take that step forward. That's what we need to take. It's simple. I've already taken it. I've taken on every, all the criticism. And we still survived it. It's not that hard. Because look at the data on our kids. Kids who don't have anything. Kids can come from situations that you can't even dream about. And we're creating better hope for them. 90% graduate. 80% go to college. 
Most of those kids are first-time graduates from high school in their family. No one in their family's graduated. And yet they're hopeful despite those circumstances. What can we do in other schools?